Good morning, students. I'm Dr. Betty, taking you through advanced inorganic topics, lesson four. In lesson three, we looked at the structure and bonding in diborane. We said diborane molecule has got bridged hydrogens and terminal hydrogens. These were approved by or confirmed by reacting diborane with the trimethylborane. At the end of the reaction, only four hydrogens were replaced by a methyl group, confirming the presence of terminal hydrogens. Bonding, we said diborane has got two types of bonds. It has a three-centered two-electron BHB bond and a two-centered two-electron BHE bond. And how does the three-centered two-electron BHB bond brought about? It is brought about by the overlap of the singly sp3 hybrid orbital of boron overlapping with the singly 1s orbital of hydrogen together with the empty sp3 hybrid orbital of the second boron resulting into the formation of the three center to electron bhb bond three center one is from one hydrogen, one boron hydrogen, and the second e boron. But using two electrons, remember, one boron is using an empty sp3 hybrid orbital. Then the two centered two electron BH bond is brought about by the overlap of singly one s orbital overlapping with a singly one, sorry, the two-centered two-electron BH bond is brought about by the overlap of the singly sp3 hybrid orbital of boron overlapping with the singly 1s orbital of hydrogen resulting into the formation of the two-centered two-electron boron HB, boron H bond. Today, we are going to look at higher borens. Preparation. They can be prepared by what method? This method has been used to prepare tetraboren 10 by the action of Diborane iodide with the sodium amalgam. When we react, diborane iodide with the sodium amalgam, we get the tetraborane 10. Another method is by heating higher borens. When we heat higher borens, we that into the formation of more higher borens. For example, tetraborane 10 at 95 degrees Celsius results into the pentaborane 11. And when we pass an electric discharge, we get more higher borens. Therefore, if we vary the temperatures, more higher borens are obtained. Another method is from the diborane. When we heat diborane, we obtain the higher borane. You can review lesson two. It was well explained. Another method is by Stokes method. Again, this one is highlighted very well in lesson two. You can go back and review lesson two, where we said that on the action of boron, on the action of 
magnesium bolide with the hydrogen chloride results into the formation of tetraborane 10. You stop at that stage, but if you hit, then it will go to the diborane. Remember, we are on higher borens. General properties. When we look at the physical state, borens are volatile gases or liquids or solids. They are electron deficient compounds. How is this proved? By testing the number of atomic orbitals present in a given boron with the number of valence electrons in the given boron. If the number of atomic orbitals are more than the number of valence electron, then that compound is electron deficient. Let us look at an example of the diborane. In diborane, we have two boron atoms and six hydrogen atoms. Each boron has four atomic orbitals. We have the 2s, 2px, 2py, and 2pz. And each hydrogen atom has got one s orbital. So the total number of atomic orbitals present are four atomic orbitals, one, two, three, four on one boron, but there are two borons, that's why we multiply by two, four times two, plus one atomic orbital of hydrogen times six hydrogens. In the diboron, we have six hydrogens. So this is eight plus six, the total is 14. When we look at the valence shell electrons in the diboron, there will be three, we have three electrons in the valence shell of the boron, times two, because there are two boron atoms, plus one electron in hydrogen, times six, because there are six hydrogens in the diboron, and the total is 12. So the number of atomic orbitals are equal to 14, more than the number of valence electrons, which are equal to two. Therefore, the diboron is an electron deficient molecules. molecule. A point to note here is all borens are electron deficient molecules. Let us look at the type of bonds found in higher borens. Higher borens may contain some, all, all of the following types of bonds. Each of these bonds is formed by sharing of two electrons between two atoms or three atoms, as the case may be. The first type of bond we have is the terminal two centered two electron BH bond, which is a covalent bond formed by the overlap of one singly field sp3 hybrid orbital of boron atom and the singly field 1s orbital on the hydrogen atom. The second type of bond is the two-centered two-electron BB bond. This links two boron atoms together and formed by the overlap of the singly field sp3 hybrid orbital of one of the boron atom with a singly field sp3 hybrid orbital of the other boron atom. The third type of bond is the three-centered two electron bridging or bent BHB bond. This links two bo boron atoms and one hydrogen atom together. And it was clearly explained in the structure in the unbonding of diborane in lesson three. So it is formed by sharing 
of two electrons by the overlap or between singly filled sp3 hybrid orbital of one boron atom empty sp3 hybrid orbital of another boron atom and the singly filled one s orbital of the hydrogen so this is singly filled sp3 hybrid orbital of boron overlapping with a singly filled 1s orbit of hydrogen together with the empty sp3 hybrid orbital of the second boron resulting into a bridge d bond the fourth one is the three centered two electron closed or triply bridged bbb bond this bond links the three boron atoms and formed by sharing of two electrons resulting into the overlap of the three sp3 hybrid orbital on the boron atoms sp3 hybrid orbital of one boron should be vacant or empty while the hybrid orbit of both of the remaining boron atoms should be singly filled. The three sp3 hybrid orbitals are situated at the corner of an equilateral triangle. If this is singly filled boron atom, singly filled another boron atom, then this one is empty, situated at a the corners of the equilateral triangle resulting into the close D bond. Since this bond co contains two electrons, each boron atom contributes to two thirds electrons for the formation of this bond. Now, how can we predict the structure of borens? The formula we have to follow is as follows. We factorize the BH, then put a bracket, the P, H, Q plus C, bracket C, where P is the number of BH group, Q plus C is the number of extra hydrogens, hydrogen atoms, then C is the charge on the species. If we let S to be equal to the BHB bond, T equal to the BBB bond, Y is equal to the BB bond, and X is equal to the number of BH2 groups. Then the equation of balance, equations of balance are Q, is equal to S plus X, P is equal to S plus T, P minus Q over two minus C is equal to T plus Y. Let us have an equation. Solve the equation of balance for the diborane six, and write a reasonable structure for such a hybrid. If we factorize the BH out, we are going to get BH bracket two, and where two is the number of the boron atoms, we are remaining with the four hydrogens. Then from this equation, from this equation, BHP, H, Q plus C bracket C, we have Q plus C, you remember we said this one is S plus X is equal to four. In this position, we have four. Then P is equal to, to two. And remember P was equal to S plus T. Then P minus Q over two minus C. If our P is two, Q is four. So Q over two minus C, which is zero, the answer is zero. And this one is equal, equal to T plus Y. 
Therefore, the equation of balances becomes two, four, zero. There is a point to note here, or a rule. The rule says that S, T, Y, X must be a hollow positive number. So we go on testing until we get positives. Negatives are not allowed, neither fractions. So if we substitute zero for S, zero here, two will be, T will be two. If T is a two, then I bring my two here, Y is a negative. The rule says they have to be whole positive numbers. We come to number two. Number one, if I put number one for S, my T will be one. I bring my one here. Then if T is one, Y is a negative. I stop there. I go to the next two. If S is a two, two minus two, T will be zero. If I bring a zero under T, Y will also be zero. If Y is a zero, my S is a two, X will be a two. So this is a positive, must be one of the possible values. Then I go to three. If I put three here, T will be negative. The moment I get a negative, I don't test anymore. If you get a negative below and above the positive values, you end there. They are four. The STXY numbers are two, zero, zero, two, where S stands for two, zero for T, zero for Y, and two for X. Then the structure of Diborel is as follows. S, we said S is the number of the BHB bond. X is equal to the number of the BH2 groups. Therefore, it has two BHB bonds and two BH2 groups. And the structure will look like this. These are the two. This is the first group of BH2 and also the second group. Then the bridged one and the second bridged one. That marks the structure of the diporin. The assignment I can leave you with is solve the equation of balance for the tetraboren 10 and write all the reasonable structures for such a hybrid. That has marked the end of lesson four. Next time we are going to look at the inorganic polymers.